One of the most popular vehicles for collectors is the Jeep. Over 600,000 of these vehicles were produced by the US government alone by contractors Ford and Willys. The many surviving examples reflect the Jeep's diverse roles. These are just some of the vast variety of vehicles owned by the members of the Invicta Military Preservation Society, or IMPS. It's Britain's fastest growing society of its kind. They're out in all weathers, and at this event, the duck is well suited to the conditions. Three companies, White, Autocar and Diamond, produced the half-track in the United States. The concept of the half-track was popular with both the Allies and the Axis forces. Chevrolet of Canada was responsible for building this heavy utility vehicle. Almost 13,000 were produced between 1942 and 1945. This is an Austin three-tonner. It's a desert vehicle, hence the registration number written in Roman numerals and Arabic. A useful feature included a storage space for tools such as a spade. These trucks were often operated at long range and were intended to be self-sufficient. What you couldn't carry, you couldn't get. That included sand channel sections of steel airfield matting, useful for getting out of sand. In campaigns such as North Africa, these vehicles did sterling service. Nestled among the trees are rather more up-to-date trucks. This is, though, a military preservation society, and war is no respecter of time. The post-war and World War II models sit comfortably side by side, and even today they could prove highly effective. This 1942 General Motors truck had an unusual role in World War II, these would tour army camps collecting blood for distribution to the battlefront. Nowadays, tea is the only life-giving liquid carried on this chassis. This truck provides home for this family when they're on tour. It even comes equipped with its own field telephone between the driver and the crew. Hello. We're leaving in five minutes, OK? Five minutes, OK then. See you soon. It's a 1942 American GMC truck with a Swiss-built medical body on the back. Um, and it's painted to represent something called the ETO blood bank. The ETO was the European theatre of operations in World War II. And in the six weeks before the D-Day invasion, they collected 200,000 litres of blood uh, ready for the field hospitals. And they did that by touring all of the American Air Force bases and the transit camps and taking blood, really, from everybody who wasn't going to be a combatant. When D-Day came, these trucks shipped over about a week later, and again, they toured the rear echelons taking blood but then it was transported straight to the battlefront. And so often it would be being pumped into an injured soldier, perhaps two hours later, after it was taken from somebody over here. Keeping a 50-year-old vehicle on the road and running requires time and patience. Rebuilding one from a virtual wreck needs little less than a miracle. But are they hard to keep on the road? They're basically pretty simple. They're, uh, they're OK, but they're, they're 25 minutes as they're entitled to when they're 55. But they're, they're basically pretty straightforward things to look after. They're not too much trouble. Not sophisticated like a modern car, that's one thing. At least you can mend the bits, which you can't on a modern car. This standard Tilly has been lovingly restored to its former glory. It was found as a complete wreck in a farmer's field. Based on the standard Flying 12 car, but with a rigid front axle. This light two-seater utility vehicle was very popular, especially with the RAF. It had all mod cons and was quite luxurious for its time. It's even got upholstery, but the danger signs are there. Notice the highly polished fire extinguisher. How difficult was it to restore? 
It was, it was quite rough. It was, it was quite bad. It had been left lying under a hedge for a long time, and it was, um, it was quite bad. The side had fallen off. Most of the woodwork had rotted away. Um, everything was rusted solid on it. Um, yeah, so it was just a question of dragging up onto the trailer, pick up all the bits that were lying about, and, and it was pretty far gone. But there, it was worth saving because they're quite rare. It was worth having a go at. If it could be done fine, if it couldn't, well. But they're quite rare. You don't find them that often. So if you do, if you want one and you see one, you don't really, you don't get too picky. No good asking for a guarantee with it because you won't get it, you know. It's, but, you know, there it is. It's, it's, come to, it's come good. The Jeep is perhaps one of the most popular vehicles collected by enthusiasts because of its ease of restoration and the availability of parts. Every day throughout the first week in June, these and other vehicles will form up to tour the beaches of Normandy. Vehicles from all over the world, including the imps, gather to add colour to the D-Day commemorations. These are the lanes of northern France, where today's preserved vehicles go on pilgrimage with their owners. Unlike most of their drivers, they've been here before, but in anger. Negotiating the narrow lanes of Normandy is still difficult. But their reception is always warm and welcoming. From Pegasus Bridge, where the parachute regiment is still revered, to Merville, where the German guns threatening Sword Beach were silenced. Every hedgerow here could tell its own story.